All right, now it's time to go to assignment six. I'm just going to do a quick introduction here so you know what to sketch for next class. You can see them. I have them all up over the classroom. We have examples of full poster designs. We're going to be doing that. This is unit 12. And what we do is we add a type design to our spot illustrations. We add type around our spot illustrations. And then we put a background behind it, turn them into posters. So here are some examples. We start with what's called a type blocking sketch. This is what you're going to do before Wednesday. Just a simple sketch, you can do it digitally or by hand, of where you want your text to go around your image. And it gives you an idea. And then we're going to learn next class how to make type design as a black vector type. We can modify existing type. We can completely design our own. And then we're going to color that type. And then we're going to put it with a background as a final poster with our colored spot illustration. The same one we use? The same spot illustration we use for assignment six. Yep. And you already know the type that you need to design around it, or at least you have suggested type, which is work in progress. Right. Notice that the type is always going to be a vector, even if it looks very non-vector-ish. Right? Because that's going to give us all of the options, just like for logo design, to really play with color versions, offsets, texture, all that kind of stuff. This one I got, this was an instructor example. I got a little over ambitious and I did two different you know, type solution ideas. Your type can even be designed based off of another type solution out there. Type cannot be copyrighted. It can only be trademarked, right? The actual words. So like my little pony is a trademark, so I had to change that quite a bit in order to make fun of it. But I could try to imitate its type design without infringing on a copyright. So you'll notice that the way you design the text is going to have a lot to do with the overall impression your image gives off. So the first step, this is all I need you to know for next class, is that you first need to do a blocking sketch. And it's pretty important. It's where the type goes with your imagery. So this is for the uh, Kyle Lambert. He does the, the key art designs, the poster art designs for, for Stranger Things and a lot of Netflix shows. So here are his blocking sketch, blocking sketch thumbnails for the season two poster of Stranger Things, the key art that shows up on Netflix. Right. He did not design the title treatment. You know, that was a graphic design firm. And you can actually look at the art of the title. It's a really fascinating link if you want to know exactly how they designed that, that opening sequence, the motion graphics for it. But this is just a quick breakdown of it. When we're doing type and when we're actually creating it, we'll have to pay attention to these things. The kerning, the space in between the individual letters, the serifs, um, basically, the overlaps and if we want to build space in where we make letters larger or thicker than other letters you know basically they're all just individual vector shapes whether we outline them or not whether we texturize them or not so we're going to be learning all these things including halftone effects print effects that are often used in in poster design so this is what the key artwork was, this is what the colored spot illustration with the background was, and then this is it with the type layered in. But notice, before he could do anything, he had to block out where he wanted the type along with the image. And it was always going to kind of go here, but in what proportion with the image to get to that end point. Here we have just pure type design, what's called typography. The text, knowing the text, but which, how do you want to arrange it, right? And then all the different ways that same vector can be expressed. And then this is a, a friend of mine who's a poster designer and is doing really, really well. And often not just does the illustration, but also does the custom type for these different projects. And it always has to fit the project. And then we have Shepard Ferry, who uses type and silkscreen. And again, the type has to fit the project. 
So, what do we need to do to get ready? Well, we know we're using this type, work in progress, but we get to design it to go with our illustration. So, in my assignment six folder that I'm starting, I can start with my line art sketch from assignment five, right? Or my finished line art. Then what I wanna do is open that up in Photoshop and I wanna start playing with type blocking. And I played with this a little bit just so I can kind of show you. I'm using type tools in Photoshop. That's one way you can sketch, you can play with that. But another way is to simply use your brush on top of your line art. And I actually like to do a lot of type blocking sketches on my own too. And then it's called text blocking or type blocking because you're actually not writing the words first. You're writing kind of areas for them to go. So work in progress. So maybe something like that, right? And if that might be a solution I want, then I think, okay, work is four letters. So I'd block it in like that. So it'd be like work up there in, that's two letters, progress. The P is going to be really big. Basically like that, right? I am not a person that loves to do a lot of hand type. I've never doodled type. Some people enjoy it a lot, but we're going to learn how to do it by hand. We're going to learn how to modify existing typefaces. So another thing you can do is use the type tool, which is the T here. And then you can use different typefaces. And in Photoshop, there are some nice options that we might look at quickly up here with the type tool where you can do things like create an arc. I'll just do a, an upper arc. And you can play with different ways of placing text around your image. But whether you do it really loosely by hand or if you really take the time to figure it out, like I tried to do, I attempted to do with these kind of neon typefaces. This is not going to be the finished solution. I want my finished solution to look better than this because I'm going to make it as my own vector. And we're going to show you how you can modify existing type as well. Whether it looks hand done or looks perfectly machined and professional. So again, we can look at some past examples. It's all in unit 12 and get sketching. And just gives you a place to start. And it's all about how you place it next to your spot illustration. We're gonna do standard portrait format vertical posters. And these are gonna be 16 by 20 inches by 350 and we'll add a border to them. All right, that's it.